positive note. Excellent. So why don't you uh, introduce yourself to everyone, even though I think they already know you from the Photoshop training channel. Yeah, thank you, Andrew. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Jesus Ramirez. I run the Photoshop training channel on YouTube, which is uh, what most people know me from. But professionally, I have been a graphic designer for I don't even know anymore, almost 20 years, I guess, at this point, um, which sounds crazy to say. Um, but yeah, that's uh, my uh, expertise is uh, in compositing. And actually, Andrew, if you don't mind sharing my screen, I guess I can uh, show my Behance page where um, you can see uh, some of my work uh, that I've done in recent times. Uh, one of the things that I'm known for is for working on the Adobe uh, Make a Masterpiece campaign a couple years ago, where we I was part of uh, several artists who were hired to recreate paintings uh, for Adobe using Adobe stock images. This is my particular piece, but in total, I believe we were five different artists working on uh, several different pieces. I've written for magazines, including uh, uh, Photoshop World magazine. I was in the cover a couple years ago. Uh, most recently, I worked on this poster for CBS. This is my first finishing job that I did with my good friend Lisa Carney, who is a fantastic, fantastic uh, photo retoucher and finisher for the film and TV industry. So this is a, a joint venture that she and I worked on together. Uh, my my job in this particular poster was to recreate the background from uh, multiple images. It took a lot longer than you would expect. It was basically uh, multiple images uh, that were shot at different angles and different perspectives with different lightings. So I had to put it all together to rebuild the studio so that the uh, CBS and marketing team could use it in different areas, for example, in the banner for their website or the actual poster for the uh, show. Lisa worked primarily on the reaching of the actors. So yeah, that was my first project in the TV industry. And I have more on the way, but I can't mm -hmm. show those just yet. Sure. Um, again, I was saying Photoshop training channel is where you can find me. I have Photoshop tutorials. I highly recommend that you check out my latest one on how to blur backgrounds in Photoshop. I just published it. It's this one here. So go ahead and check it out. Um, I don't know if you can put the link in there, Andrew, for me. If not, I guess I can just copy the link and, and paste it in the in the chat, I guess. Um, but if not, just go into the YouTube channel and and check it out. I don't know if I can uh, leave well, let, a comment. Or... Let me uh, remind everyone that it's, um, you know, his channel is youtube.com slash Photoshop training channel. Or, of course, just go up to the top where the search bar is and just type in Photoshop training channel. And then you will find that as one of the top uploads. Yeah, and PTC is the the logo. But anyway, um, you, you can also go to the website photoshoptrainingchannel.com, tutorials there. And something else I'm promoting is I'm posting on TikTok again. So if you're interested in one minute Photoshop tutorials, you can check it out. It's tiktok.com slash at JR from PTC. But enough about me, Andrew. I think that almost everyone here, I'm sure everyone here is here to watch uh, some Photoshop tips and tricks that they might not know. So I can get started now if, if you're yeah. ready. Yeah, I think, I think it's uh, perfect. And what I will do is I will switch you over to full screen view and let you take it away. Thanks so much. Awesome. Cool. And feel free to interrupt me at any time. If anybody has a question. we Will do. Awesome. Cool. So I wanted to show you a trick um, in, so the way that I'm going to do this stream is I'm just going to show you examples of how to do something, um, which will be a trick, but then within those examples, I'm also going to show extra tips and tricks. So even though you might've seen some of these techniques on my YouTube channel, I'm going to try to include things that I haven't shown in the past, or maybe not with that specific example so that you can learn, even though you might've seen this example in my YouTube channel. So um, what I'm going to show you how to do is a couple things here. Um, there's a tool that I don't see a lot of people using in Photoshop. It's nested under the Spot Healing Brush tool, which is the Content Aware Move tool. And this tool allows you to create a selection and then move the subject to another location, like maybe here. And then Photoshop um, blends the pixels of the image where it where you place it and it fills in with content aware where it was and it does a good job just doing it very loosely as you just saw but you can actually take this a step further and really um make a, a net, uh, an image that is very useful for what you want to do so let me show you an example of how to properly use this tool 
First of all, in Photoshop, you always want to work non-destructively so you can create a new layer. And notice that as, soon as, that as soon as I create a new layer, as soon as this document has more than one layer, sample all layers becomes enabled. See that? If I, if I delete this layer, I can't click on it. See that? Cannot click on it. So if I create a new layer, it lights up. And to stay organized, I will name this layer dog because this is where my dog will be. And I'm going to click on sample all layers. That means that whenever I create a selection, like so, I can add to it by holding shift, clicking and dragging, and move this, Photoshop will now make those adjustments on this layer. See that? Right there. That's what Photoshop did. So it's now in its, on its own layer, so we can work non-destructively. But let me show you even a better way of doing this. Um, a better way of doing this, I think at least, is let me just undo this a couple of steps. And by the way, here's a tip. I should have pressed undo so many times. The efficient way of doing of doing it is by going into window and selecting history. And from the history panel, you can see everything that I've done. So instead of just you know pressing control Z to undo, I can just simply select the last history state that I uh, that I want. So for example, in this case, I'll just go to the name change and you'll go back to that step without pressing control Z multiple times. I can just go and click on you know the that particular step rather than just pressing control C multiple times. So here I am with this blank dog layer. And the way that I would recommend doing this is by going into the object selection tool. When you have the object selection tool enabled on the options bar, also make sure that you check this box, object finder. When you do, Photoshop will now allow you to hover over the image if you're on, on that layer. So you got, you got to make sure that you're on the background layer. You can hover over the image, and Photoshop should highlight the objects in uh, blue here. And the reason that that took a while is because it was if you saw this icon here, Photoshop was processing the image. Now that Photoshop is done processing the image, when I hover over the dog, it will highlight in blue. And that will allow you to easily make a selection. So with the when the, with the dog highlighted in blue, I can just click once, and you'll see that Photoshop will highlight the dog. I'm also going to go into the lasso tool because I'm going to add the snow that's being deformed by his body because that will help create the illusion that the dog is also sitting in the area that we're going to place them in. By the way, you can add to a selection by holding shift. So I was holding shift and clicking and dragging around this area. Here's the keyboard shortcut, the uh, combination of keyboard shortcuts and a technique that you may not know. Let me know in the chat if you have seen this before. If you press the Q key on the keyboard, you will enter the quick mask mode. So basically, this allows you to paint with black to hide pixels. Uh, I'm sorry, you got to... Let me see, why isn't that painting with black? I'm sorry, yeah, I completely confused myself. So you do paint with black to high pixels, but the reason we couldn't see it is because these pixels are, are not selected. Only the pixels that are um, in normal view, like the normal colors, those are the selected ones. So if I paint over his head, then it'll, it'll become that red overlay. So when I press the Q key again, you can see that his head is no longer selected. So if I paint with white, I will add to the selection. See, I'll press the Q key one more time, and you can see now that this area was added to the selection. The cool thing about the quick mask mode is that you can also apply filters to it. So once you press the Q key and you enter this view, you can go into the filter menu and you can select other and maximum. And now you can expand the selection by using this slider. The best thing about this panel is that you can select the roundness option. The roundness option allows you to use decimal points, so not whole numbers. Squareness would just give you whole numbers. See that? Just one, two, three, four, five, whatever. With roundness, you actually have decimal points. So 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, so you can make more fine-tuned adjustments. So I can use the up arrow on the keyboard and decide how far I want to expand my selection. So I just want to expand it a little bit so that it covers most of the dog, or not, I shouldn't say that, so that it covers the entire dog. And once the dog is completely covered by the selection, I can press OK, and I'll press the Q key one more time, and Photoshop now creates a selection that goes around the dog, but there is now a space between the dog mm -hmm. and those pixels that I selected. 
And I think I was, right. I didn't go far enough. So I'm just going to repeat that last adjustment so that it, uh, actually, let me do that again. I'm so gonna, a Andrew Nichols says, learn something new already. Awesome. I'm, I'm glad it was helpful. So I just repeated that process again, just to get a little bit more of the dog because I saw that some pixels were not selected. But anyway, so now that this dog is selected, and again, just in case it wasn't clear, the Q key gets you into the quick mask view. And if you don't like keyboard shortcuts, you can click on this icon here below the foreground and background color, and that does the same thing. So with the selection active, now um, I'm going to go into this blank dog layer and nest it under the spot healing brush tool. You'll see the content that we're move tool, and you have the sample all layers check box. So now I can move the dog over here. And when I release, notice that I get a transformation box. So I can move the reference point down, hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and click and drag to scale from that reference point. So I can make the dog larger. See that? Maybe he's closer to us or something. And I can place him there, right about here, and click on the check mark to commit the changes. And Photoshop will now do the same thing. But in my opinion, this gives you much better results because you didn't really go too much into the background. You kept as much of the original background as possible. Yeah, very now, cool. In some cases, you are going to get some, you know, I, I don't really make a good job in selecting the dog there. This is why that line is there, but that's okay. There's no, no problem. What you can do is select the spot healing brush tool. And again, with sample all layers, you can just come in here and you can just paint those imperfections away. You could also use the clone stamp tool and maybe hold Alt on Windows option in the Mac and click from this spot and just copy those pixels there so that it looks more realistic something right. like that so before and after so it's a great tool and i hi highly recommend that you use it one of the most important things that i want you to take away from this particular example is the ability and i'm, I'm going to do it a different way now just so you can see the alternative i'm going to go into select subject but what i wanted you to see is that you can press the q key on the keyboard to enter the quick mask mode and you can go into filter other and select maximum and you can expand the selection that way while using these um, pixels with decimal points i know that some of you may be thinking well why can't you go into select modify and expand which will expand the mask now two things uh number one is that I don't have decimal values, so I can just use whole numbers. See that? So I can go one, two, three, four, five. But if I wanted to expand my selection by any number in between one and two pixels, I can't do that. So I get more control using the method that I just showed you, the maximum method with the quick mask mode. And number two, I don't have a preview, right? So look, as I expand my selection here, I can't see, you know, like I don't really know what 16 pixels will look like. So right. I would have to press OK, and now I can see what 16 pixels look like. But if 16 pixels is too much, then what I need to do now is undo and go back into select, modify, and expand. And then you know maybe now go to 5 pixels and press OK. So too the method steps. that, yeah, the method that I'm suggesting is simply pressing the Q key to enter the quick mask view, then go into filter, other, maximum, and I get a preview. See that? So now I know what 16 pixels look like. See, that's what it looks like. That's too much. So I can go to five. But you know what? Maybe five is too much, but four is not enough. Well, I can do 4.5, you know? So that's the advantage of using this technique. Once I'm done, I can press the Q key again, and the selection comes back, and I can continue adjusting it accordingly. So that is the advantage of using this advanced technique. Um, let me know in the chat if that's something new for you using the quick mask mode with the um, maximum or minimum filter. You could also use a minimum filter and let me show you what the difference is. Uh, I'll go into the quick mask mode and if you go into the minimum filter, it'll just minimize the mask. See that? It just makes it smaller. So maybe this could be used maybe for uh, removing edge halos or something like that where you just go a little bit deeper into your subject see that and when you create a mask I'll, I'll just create it so you can see you probably will have less edge halos because you went a few pixels deeper into the the subject as you can see here so excellent technique also um 
let me show you what happens when uh let me see what's the best easiest way to show you let me just delete this i was just going to say you got a lot of comments saying that this was uh new to them and that the maximum trick is super helpful thanks for that Jesse. awesome yeah thank you so much and uh something else i wanted to show you is you might be thinking well that that's cool but why do you have to go into the quick mask mode why can't i just go into filter other maximum well when i do that look look what happens photoshop is actually applying the filter to the pixels mm. see that Strange. so this filter only works with a mask and you might be asking well that's not a mask well if you go into the channels panel you'll see it here see that that's what it is it's a mask, it's a mask. there it is it's just we're visualizing it different see that right there quick quick mask it's the same thing as if i were to create a layer mask uh excuse me a channel and fill it with white exactly the same thing see the thumbnail it looks exactly the same the only difference is that the, is that the one in the bottom is temporary so when i press the q key it disappears but it's exactly the same as as the other one nice so that's why when you apply the filter photoshop is looking at the alpha channel it's not looking at the pixels so if you just apply the pixels to the layer photoshop will attempt to apply the minimum algorithm to the pixels and that's why you get that weird effect so that's why a lot of people uh you know, I'm sure everyone's done this. I've done it where I just literally click on everything to see what happens. So if you're in the other option here, the other filter categories, and you select maximum, you actually think that this filter should create this weird effect. And you're like, okay, well, that's cool. But when am I going to use that effect? Well, in reality, <laughs> this filter was created to work with the alpha channel to expand or contract the mask. That's why it's called minimum and maximum. Yeah, it has but, a pretty abstract look when you apply it directly, yeah. Right. Cool. Great. Um, and I see in the chat, um, someone said that it's also great with Gaussian Blur. I'm, I'm guessing what they're referring to is when you have, when you're in the quick mask mode, um, you can go into like filter, blur, Gaussian Blur, and you can blur it a little bit and, you know, press OK. And what that means is that the mask is now blurry. It's not sharp. Right. That's something you may or may not want. But yeah, you can definitely uh, apply the Gaussian blur as well if you want to in the quick mask mode. And to show you what that looks like when you press the Q key again, you'll have the selection. But obviously, when you fill that selection, it will be blurry and it won't be a sharp mask, obviously, because we blurred it with the Gaussian blur. Right. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Any any questions in the chat? Are we okay to move on? Yeah, just people saying it was new to them, and you know, great awesome. tip. Haven't used um, a filter on it, so yeah. Yeah, I mean, since we're talking about mask, let's talk about a different kind of mask. Um, so a lot of times when working in Photoshop, you and I've done this in many of my tutorials, so I'm definitely not criticizing it at all. You may see an image like this, and you might think, well, I can easily just you know change the blending mode to something like screen where Photoshop will uh, either screen or lighten, it doesn't matter, or any one of these, where Photoshop will hide black and keep the other colors. And this certainly can work, but notice how translucent it is. And the reason that that is, is because the pixels for them to be fully opaque need to be white, which means it wouldn't have any detail. So this technique can work in some cases, but in this case, it's not giving me the effect that I want. I want to keep the the depth and the texture of the snow so that it looks more realistic. So what can I do about this? Well, one of the things that I think that, that I recommend that you do is go into the channels panel and then you can use any one of these channels. They're mostly the same or slightly different, but in this case, in some cases, they'll be very different. Um, but in this case, I can select any one of these channels and then just duplicate the channel. With a layer mask, as you know, black hides and white reveals. So just so that this is more obvious, you don't need to do this step really, but just so that it's more obvious, I'm just gonna make the rest of the background black. So everything will be black except for the snow. So then I can now hold Control and Windows, Command on the Mac and click on the blue copy channel here, go back into RGB and apply that selection as a layer mask by clicking on the layer mask icon. And notice the difference now, there's more substance to it. And the cool thing about doing it this way is that if you feel that there's still, still a little transparent, you can go into image adjustment and levels on that mask 
and you can brighten the mask. And when you brighten the mask, then more pixels show. So you can yeah. adjust, you know, the intensity of those pixels that way you can get a lot more of that texture in the actual depth that's in the image. Also, since we're actually dealing with transparency, what you can do is double click to the side of the layer and add a drop shadow to it. So figure out where the light source is coming from and match the angle. For the color of the shadow, just select the shadow that's already found in the image. In this case, it's dark brown or dark red. Press OK, and you can adjust the opacity accordingly, and obviously the size and the distance and all of that. So you can you know, really start matching this shadow to your scene. I always like to add just a tiny little bit of noise to the shadow so that they're not so sharp, and there's, they break a little bit better, at least to my eye. And you can see the difference before and after. See that? Just by adding just that little bit of shadow, it gives it a little more realism. And it looks like I didn't quite match the direction of the shadow here. I think the shadow should be, uh, the light source should be coming down like so. So notice the, the, the distance there. When I increase the distance, you can really see where that shadow is going, right? So yeah, that's more or less the angle that I want. So then I'll bring the distance back down a little bit and I'll press OK. So I think that shadow looks a little bit better. But that's the point. The point is that you can uh, use a channel-based selection to make selections around your image. Excellent. Cool. Any questions, Andrew? Uh, just uh, the professor says, mind blown. <laughs> awesome, professor. <laughs> cool. Yeah, awesome. Nice. Let's move on to a different example. Um, as you can see, I, I have several things here, and, and I guess it's time to, um, I, I don't use the word plug, it's rather a show, because I'm not really plugging anything. But if you're in the latest version of Photoshop, and let us know in the chat what version of Photoshop you're using. This is Photoshop 2022. And the in Photoshop 2022, um, what you can do is you can click on this icon here to bring up the Discover panel. And on the Discover panel, there's this section called Hands-On Tutorials. And I actually have tutorials inside of Photoshop that you can follow. Um, for example, in the Add Photo Effects sections, I have a lot of tutorials on here. Most of these are mine. Um, all these are mine. All these are mine. All these are mine. This one's mine. I, I, I Add texture to a photo is not mine. And add a glowing effect to a photo is not mine. And increase contrast with a, with a blend mode and an adjustment layer is not mine. But all the other ones in here are mine. And how this works is when you enable a tutorial, you can see my name here, Jesus Ramirez, there I am. Um, I can click on Start Tutorial, and Photoshop will automatically open up an image, and you can follow these on-screen overlays so that you can create the effect. So in this case, I would click on the square and then go into Select and Subject, and you can see the overlays appear. And you know, it's it's like if I were telling you if I was sitting next to your office or your home office and you know, coffee drop or wherever you like to work, and just telling you click here, or click there. So this is what this this is intended to do. So so make sure that you check it out. Um, it's I'm a just nice gonna, step by step, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I encourage you to check it out. Um, I also have some tutorials in the select and mask section, and the one here that's mine is this one: replace a product shot background with a layer mask. That one is also mine. Um, and I believe there's like two more in there somewhere, but those two sections are the ones that have most of my tutorials. I think the other one is in retouch photos, maybe. Um, I don't remember exactly where the other ones sure. are, but those in those sections, you can for sure find my tutorials. And since I was showing you this one, why don't we... And just, and just to remind people, where do they find that? Where do they... Yeah, uh, Photoshop 2022 and you were in the Discover panel. So um, not, not Windows, sorry. Uh, click on this icon here on the search. little search icon, or you can also press Control F on Windows, Command F on the Mac. Great. F for Frank. Um, cool. And I can see some people are in uh, 2020. Unfortunately, that's not available in this tick in this. Uh, Got to do those version. updates. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I'll show you that example. I mean, this is what the final result looks like. And um, this technique shows you a couple a couple of very important things. Number one is, as you already saw, we have the select subject feature. You can use the object selection tool with object finder enabled 
as you saw in the earlier example and just highlight the image and click to make a selection. Or as I showed in the step-by-step -step example, you can go into select and choose subject. This uses artificial intelligence, machine learning technology known as Adobe Sensei. It analyzes the image and it selects the subject. Um, you can use either technique up to you. If you had more than one subject, then the object selection tool is probably the best choice because you can select which person or object to select. In this case, it didn't make a difference. And something that I recommend that you do is you can apply a mask to a group. So you can create a group and then click on the layer mask icon. And the reason that you want to do that is so that you can create multiple adjustment layers and only um, use one mask, right? So any adjustment that I make will only affect the contents of that mask. The other way of doing this, and I'll disable them, I'll just create a group and show you. The other way of doing this will be to have, um, let me just put this up here so you can see why this is beneficial. So if you had a group, right? And in that group, you had these adjustment layers. Oh, here you go, I, I already did that, okay. So we're only gonna group with, look at group number two. If I had a group in that group, I wanted to do the same thing, select the subject. So I would go into select subject. There it is. And I wanted to apply this effect just to that group. I would need to delete the layer mask and then apply it. And then you can copy a layer mask by holding Alt on Windows option on the Mac and then dropping it on another layer. Replace it. Yes, I want to replace it. So you know, and imagine there's more than than two layers. You know, imagine there's ten adjustment layers, whatever it is. But the point is that if I decide that I don't want this effect to affect the shirt, well, then I have to come in here and paint with black, right? Because now that effect will not affect the shirt. But the problem is that I have multiple adjustment layers, right? I would have to do exactly the same thing, either paint exactly in the same areas, probably more efficient to duplicate a layer like I showed you earlier by holding the Alt key, but that's a lot of work, right? Because if you have 10 layers, you have to do that to every layer. So it's much more efficient to have one layer mask controlling everything. So that's what I'm doing here. I have one layer mask that is going to create that effect so that if I change my mind, I only have to change the layer mask once instead of changing the layer mask in multiple adjustment layers. I hope that made so, sense. Let me know if you have any yeah. questions in the chat. Um, but anyway, so now what I can do is I can go into the gradient map. The gradient map maps colors to tonality. What that means is that the colors here on the left are gonna go to the darker colors in the image and the colors on the right will go to the brightest colors in the image. So in, the, in a black to white gradient, it's gonna create a black and white image, right? But what happens if we change this white to say, red and press OK. Uh, we don't have to press OK. We can see the preview. Now it goes from black to red. See that? Um, what if we change it to blue? Well, now it goes from blue or yeah, from, from black to blue, right? So the brightest areas are blue and the darkest areas are black. So you can adjust this accordingly and press OK. I'll press OK one more time and that's the result. See that? Only applied to the model because that's what the layer mask is doing. So if you look at the final result, everything is going to be blue. And then on, on the right-hand side, we're gonna have red. So for this to look a little more realistic, you can change the blending mode and you can try using a blending mode like hard light or vivid light. In this case, I think hard light will look best. It looks more like actual light and maybe reduce the opacity just a tiny little bit, maybe like 95%, you know? So before and after. So how do we create the light on the other side? Well, we can just duplicate this layer by pressing Control J on Windows, Command J on the Mac, and we can change the gradient color. Instead of going from black to blue, we can now go from black to red. And you know you can just choose the best color for the image and press OK. But now this is being applied to the entire image, and we don't want that. We just want it applied to certain areas. So I can select. Uh, I, can, I can click on the layer mask here and click on invert to hide. Black hides white reveals. So this entire layer mask is black. So nothing there is visible. What I can do now is select my brush tool and paint with white and only paint on the areas where I want the red to show up. See that? Like so. 
and you know you can keep adjusting the opacity change the blending mode to something else if you like whatever you think works best for your projects and when you spend a little more time this will be your final result as you can see in this example it's exactly the same technique using hard light at 90 percent and here i'm using hard light at 90 percent uh, as well and that's how that was created that looks like a uh, netflix poster right like a exactly netflix. definitely like something that uh, our good friend lisa carney would create and you know what i i didn't show lisa's website so let me do that now lisa as i said is a great friend of mine and you can learn from her as well lisa carney.com is a website and here's another one of the posters that you know she worked on from the same tv show that i worked on with her and this is a kind of a movie posters she creates she did a the venom posters, movie yeah. posters uh the boys a lot of shows that you might recognize indeed so make sure that you come over and check out lisa and also check out her online workshops so she's got a lot of online training um if, if you're somebody who's interested in learning about uh creating portraits and uh you know posters for the movie industry so check lisa out okay. anyway um here's another trick for you guys, uh, let me find the image. I know I have it saved here and somewhere. Jesus, yes, I just wanted to answer this one question, which was um, uh, Perry. Perry Perry says, "Would there be a YouTube link after the live?" Yes, I will be sharing the link to this uh, event after. Yep. Yeah, definitely. And also, I think it's a good uh, time to let people know that Andrew, you have a brand new channel, right? Yeah. So, uh, so if you can subscribe to my digital art our digital artist, Andrew Cavanaugh channel on YouTube. I will Here be uh, showcasing my digital art. Appreciate that. My digital art, Photoshop and photography focused live streams like today, and mm -hmm. also some of my tutorials. So yeah. So, so just so that people know, this video that you're watching now will live in Andrew's uh, YouTube page, which is digital artist, Andrew Cavanaugh. So make sure that you click on that subscribe button to not only follow Andrew, but make sure that you, are subscribed so that you could see all the other live streams. Andrew often has uh, people doing free live streams. Uh, I know you've had Colin Smith in the past. I know you've had Mark Keeps. Uh, I think you might have even had Lisa in past yep. streams, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Earth so Oliver and yeah. Serge, Serge Ramali. And yeah. yeah. We have a, a photographer for my group, Daniel Venter, who's going to be doing the next one next week as well. So yeah, yeah plenty of stuff coming. Excellent. Appreciate it. Yeah. So if you guys see anything that you enjoy in this video, do us a favor, hit the like button, subscribe. It helps out Andrew. And that'll be a great way of saying uh, thank you for, for you know the content that we're providing. So I would really, really appreciate it if you guys just subscribe. Andrew has a goal of getting to, uh, what, what's your current goal, Andrew? Well, for now, just even to 500, because once I 500. hit 500, I get the uh, community tab. And then I can there also post my artwork, which... That's a big part of what I do. I'm a digital artist. So there you go. So make sure that you um, subscribe. Um, and then that way, Andrew can keep posting more free streams and you guys can learn more Photoshop and Lightroom and photography and all that cool stuff. Cool. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. So this is, um, I'm going to show you now how to do the opposite, right? So this image has a lot of, uh, it's got a huge color cast, right? So that was basically what we were replicating in this effect. Um, we were trying to apply a color cast to an image that doesn't have one. So how do we do the opposite? Remove a color cast from an image that has one. And the easiest way to do that is with the Photoshop uh, neural filters are new. If you go into filter and select, new, uh, select neural filters, you'll see these AI enabled filters. And there's one called Colorize that's used to add color to a black and white image. But you could also use it on an image that has color. It doesn't have to be a black and white image. So when I click on this, Photoshop will analyze the image and it will colorize it. So see, it removed the color cast yet before and after. Now, I'm just going to uh, apply this effect on a new layer. And some of you may be thinking, well, this is it looks amazing. But if you really, really look, it didn't keep the green from the shirt, right? If you see her shirt, her shirt's green. So how do we add the green back on? And also, it's there, she has no sleeves and some white sleeves were added on there. So like, how do we fix that? Well, you can create yet another layer. And I'll just call this layer color. And I'll change the blending mode to color. The color blending mode keeps the 
hue and saturation of the current layer, but keeps the luminosity of the layer below. In other words, you can just colorize something. Um, so with the brush tool active, I can select that same green by holding, when you have the brush tool active, you can hold Alt and Windows option on the Mac and click to temporarily go into the eyedropper tool. And then you can select that green of the shirt. When you release the Alt key or option key, you'll go back into the brush tool. So now on this color layer, I can just paint with green. See that? So I'm just painting with green. And obviously, I'm going to go quickly here. I don't want to spend too much time painting uh, this, but you know, you'll know, you see the results. I'm just going to go super fast here. And it's not perfect, but that's not the point. It's so, very satisfying to see all the, the dark pixels, the black parts remain and just the color take. Right? It's, yeah. it's super cool. And then we can do the same thing for the um, her skin, right? So I can go into uh, hold the Alt on Windows option in the Mac. Again, when I have the brush tool enabled, if you want to, you can just click on the eyedropper tool if you want, select the color, and then go back into the brush tool, but that's too many steps. The point is that once you select the skin tone, you can go in there and paint that in. I mean, I'm not very happy with the color that I chose, to be honest with you, so maybe I'll select that one. Um, but you, you get the idea. The point is, is you have to come in there and, and select the color that's appropriate for what you're trying to do and then paint that in accordingly. And when you're done, you'll have something that looks more uh, realistic than the, the result there. And I think that, the, I, again, I didn't choose a color. I think the color that I chose for the skin was a little too saturated, but you know, you get the idea. So yeah, nice. The, the point was to take an image and easily colorize it to remove the color cast. See that? So much, much more accurate that way. And also like for, if you really, really wanted to get like a super realistic effect, well, notice that the spray paint here in the background is blue, right? So then you will also have to come and paint that in. Oops, wrong layer. You also also would have to come and paint that in, but it's much easier than you know trying to remove the color cast off the person. So you know, and also like what you can do uh, if you want to create a stylized effect let me just uh, apply a layer mask to this layer if you want to create a stylized effect you can now selectively decide what areas of the image have that color cast right so maybe maybe i am happy with the way the color cast looks in the background right so see that yeah that's a nice balance nice balance there yeah and if you're you know if, if the issue is that you wanted her face to be more natural well you can just bring back the colors on the other areas like so you know, and then and then her face doesn't. You can just add a little bit so it doesn't look so so strong. Here's a trick: when you paint, you can also go into Edit and Fade, and the Fade Brush Tool command will fade the last brush stroke. So that last one, I'm just gonna just minimize it a little bit so it's not so strong. So see, yeah, whatever nice. you want to do, or you can paint with white to reveal the, the the filter, right? So maybe we ju we just want the background. We decided that the foreground doesn't look that good. And you can just adjust this any way that you want. See that? Great. Excellent. Awesome. Any any other questions in the chat, Andrew? Uh, Jesse says, this is great, Jesus. Awesome tips. And uh, Car City Cat is asking once again, um, will this be available for viewing later? So once again, yes. And <laughs> go to my digital art or digital artist, Andrew Kavanaugh on YouTube, subscribe, and you can see all the recordings and there'll be plenty of other live events coming up as well. So yeah, great stuff. Awesome. So now uh, let me just close a couple of these files that we're not working with so many things. And I'm gonna show you, that, you know, this truck is, is a terrible photo actually, Andrew, but it does a fantastic job in showing one of my favorite features in sure. Photoshop, which is the, um, auto color correction options. So when you create a curves adjustment layer now, I know I asked earlier what version of Photoshop people were in. Now I want to know what version you started with because I started in version seven. And back in those days, if I wanted to color correct an image like this, we would have to do um, it all manual. You would have to go into the art. I mean, this is just one other method. It wasn't the only method, but this was a method. You would have to go into the uh, curves adjustment layer and then go into the red channel and make sure that you found the information in the darks using the histogram, then go in the green channel, or actually this is the information in the darks earlier, I was matching the information of the brights. So I'm doing that here. 
So I'm finding the dark and light colors in each channel. And once I, I got to it, you know, once I, I dragged these sliders to where the information started, I got, you know, a pretty neutral image, right? Well, in newer versions of Photoshop, we don't have to worry about doing all that work. We can uh, simply go into the auto button now. By default, Photoshop uses uh, enhanced brightness and contrast. So that's what Photoshop uses by default. So if you click on auto, Photoshop does that, which doesn't look that good. In my opinion, um, the find dark and light colors is a better algorithm to use, Ooh, which nice. basically behind the scenes does what we just did. And I can I also like checking snap neutral midtones again to further um, balance the image. And you can just click on save as defaults so that the default algorithm that Photoshop uses when you click on this auto button is the one that I just mentioned. So nice. from now on, when you go into the curves adjustment layer and click on auto, Photoshop will do that. And that, in my opinion, is the best algorithm to use out of the auto color correction options. Again, alt on Windows, option on the Mac, and click on auto. And you can just, you know, if, if you wanted to, if something works better for you and your projects, you can definitely use a different algorithm. But in my opinion, most, uh, when you're color balancing, the fine dark and light colors does the best job. So that's and, something and that I, I would recommend say, that you add. And I would say this is a good testament of the need for the subscription. I think that with the subscription, we always get new features added and it's come such a long way from since when we first started. So. For sure, for sure. I definitely agree, Andrew. Um, another way that you can use this feature is to color match. So let me show you what I mean by that. In, oops, uh, let me see, I ha I just saw it here. So what I, uh, another thing that you can do, uh, again, to, to um, color match is you can create the curves adjustment layer and clip it to the layer below. This icon here will clip this adjustment layer to a layer below, which means that you will only affect that layer. You won't affect them anything else because without this, notice the down pointing arrow is no longer pointing at the jet. So when I make an adjustment, it affects the entire image. See that? But if I just want this layer to affect the jet, I can click on this icon and now the adjustments only affect the jet, which is why this little arrow is here. It's telling us that this layer is controlling the plane. And what you can do and by the way, if you have an, uh, you know, if you made an adjustment and you don't like it, you can just click on the reset button and it just resets the adjustment layer. But you can hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and click. And you can click on Find Dark and Light Colors and uncheck Snap uh, Snap Neutral Midtones. And what we're going to do is we're going to match the colors of the background to the foreground so that this composite matches. But this is not going to work. I'm going to show you two ways to fix it when it doesn't work. So when you click on shadows, I got to tell Photoshop what color the shadows in my image are. Well, they're this dark red, but when I click, watch what happens. It turns white. So why are my shadows turning white? Well, if you notice here in the layers panel, the focus, the white outline is on the adjustment. Uh, I'm sorry, on the layer mask, not the adjustment layer. So if you want it to work, you have to hold the control click uh, key and click. So watch now that when I click, you holding the control key, it works. Um, sometimes it's just a whole lot easier to just click on this icon here so that the focus, this white outline is on the, the adjustment layer. So now when I go into the auto options and uncheck snap, snap neutral midtones and I just click, uh, oops, sorry, and click here when I select the shadows, it just works because the focus, this white outline is on the adjustment layer, not the layer mask. And I don't have to hold control, but if you forget, you can hold control and then there you go. It works. Um, so what you can do is select the color of the shadows. In this case, it was this, you know, dark reddish color and I can adjust it if I don't like it, you know, like if I click on that color and it's not dark enough, I can just click here and then, you know, select the color that I want and press okay. So now my shadows are this color, my highlights. Well, I don't want to use a specular highlight, you know, like these blown out pixels, which is basically white. So I, I kind of want the yellow that's like off white. So I can just select the yellow that's off white. And you know what? Maybe I want a little bit more red in those shadows so I can adjust them accordingly. And I'm still not happy with this yellow. I, I might want a little bit more of that orange. So something like that. And press OK. I'll press OK one more time. Photoshop will ask me if I want to save these colors as my defaults. You rarely want to do that. So in 99% right. of the cases, the answer is no. By the way, if you accidentally hit yes, I'll show you what to do in a moment. So I'll hit yes in case you do it by accident. 
And what you can do now is look at the RGB channel, the red channel, see how the red channel has been adjusted and the green channel has been adjusted and the blue channel has been adjusted to apply this color cast, which is great. But the super cool thing about this is that the RGB channel has not been adjusted. What that means is that I can come in here now and adjust the contrast of that layer so that it better matches the background that it's in. See that? So now this looks a whole lot more realistic than what we had before because we're using similar colors in the composite. Now, I mentioned that, you know, if you accidentally hit the, yes, I want to save these colors, what happens when you apply something is going to apply those colors to the image. And obviously that's not going to work unless it's this specific image. So how do I reset these? Very simple. Just make the shadows all the way black. So make sure that RGB is completely zero. And then the white is 255 across the board. Red 255, green 255, blue 255, and press OK. Press OK one more time. And Photoshop will say, you want to make these new colors the default colors? And the answer is yes. So now when you apply the auto color correction options, Photoshop will use the black and white colors as opposed to whatever other colors you saved. Excellent. Very cool. cool. Um, how much time do we have, Andrew, so I can know what, what to show? Well, it's uh, like nine minutes till the hour, but you can go, of course, longer because this is quite quite excellent. So Okay, let me let me see. Um, I guess I can show... We'll, we'll do something a little different. So um, recently I took a, a trip, as, well, recently, I mean, almost a year ago, wow, um, in about... June of 2021, I took a road trip across the East Coast and I went to about 12 or 13 states. Um, and there was a, a, a trip that was about three weeks with me and a friend from high school. And one of the places we went to was the Empire State Building. And I shot this photo with my cell phone. And what I wanted to show you is that you can, you know, shoot photos with your phone and still create something pretty decent. Um, you usually want to convert things to a smart object to work non-destructively. So that's why I'm doing that. Non-destructively means that I can always come back and make changes if I want to, as opposed to keep the changes that I make. And I can go into filter, uh, camera raw filter. And with the com uh, camera raw filter, what, I, what you can do is something that I use very often, which is the geometry panel. And you can click on auto and see what happens. But notice how now the sign here doesn't look like it's at an angle anymore. See that? So this is before and this is after. So I like doing that just to keep things straighter and they just don't look so, um, you know, because this clearly looks like it was shot like with a phone in the sense that you can imagine me holding my phone up and just shooting it once, you know. So by doing this, you kind of remove the perspective and it feels like it's, you know, more professional. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, you could also select the guided options tools here, these draw guide things, and you can click and drag and just follow the vertical lines here. And I can do the same thing on the other side and that will stretch it uh, or, you know, correct the perspective. I can also do the same thing on top here and I'm correcting now the, perspe the horizontal perspective here. So there it is. So this is before and after. And you know, you can just adjust it any way that you want. You can also go into manual transformations and maybe I can scale it in just to remove the pixels there, the pixels that are transparent. I could have filled them with content aware and that might have worked, but in this case, I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to bring that in and That's I can great. offset it and adjust it accordingly. You know, what, whatever works for your image. In this case, I'm just showing you a couple of things. So maybe I'm going to offset it a little bit so it's completely centered, something like that. And then um, another thing that I like doing in, in these type of images is going to the effects panel and just adding a little bit of a vignette to add uh, more interest, or not interest, I'm sorry, to uh, draw more attention to the center object. And, you know, there's so many things that you can do at this point. Um, when you have an image here at this level, you can adjust tonality, for example, Example, by going into the basic panel, maybe bringing down the highlights to add more detail in the highlighted areas, maybe expand the shadows to show more details within the shadows. In this case, maybe I want to cool the image a little bit and maybe increase contrast and yep. increase texture to make everything pop a little more, clarity, 
whatever you want. I'm going to increase vibrance, which adds saturation to pixels that are not highly saturated. Another cool feature is the color grading tool that allows you to add a color to the shadows, midtones, or highlights. So in this case, maybe I want to add like this cool dark blue to the shadows, you know, what, whatever, whatever works. And maybe the highlights have the opposite, like maybe orange or something, just so that yes. that design pops. Obviously, this is completely subjective, whatever you want to do. Um, I'm just showing you options. The point is, is that once you press OK, you took that boring cell phone photo and you made it into something with a lot more interest before and after. And this is just a quick example. You can do so much more to the image, but I highly recommend that you take your images into um, Camera Raw and apply all these different adjustments that can really enhance your image. And I love, I was going to say, I love how there's so many different panels in the Camera Raw filter. And that it's it's just so easy to use. It's all just kind of moving a slider. There's nothing that's that confusing. You know, it's quite quite definitely, yeah. definitely. Um, I was gonna show um, Lightroom for just a second cool. here. Um, so let me just enable Lightroom and let me just find what I want to show you. I have a whole bunch of stuff here, but just to give you uh, guys an idea of the things that I do with my images here. Um, give me one second while I find sure. these images. Um, so I, I, I talked about it on some of my, my streams that I, I really like the new features in Lightroom mobile. I use them all the time. Uh, I, I rarely go into write Lightroom Classic anymore for my needs. I understand that some people are like wedding photographers and things like that, where they're dealing with hundreds, if not thousands of photos. And Lightroom Classic is definitely the way to go if, if that's the case. But for my needs, I definitely enjoy uh, taking photos of 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 drinks, actually, Andrew, believe it or not. Okay. So I... Like cocktails? I Okay, yeah, like cocktails. So, like, that's an example right over. there. Nice. Yeah. So, like, you know, th they're all shot with my cell phone always. Yeah, the lighting and, is really nice. The glow behind and stuff. Right? You know, and like, you know, I always add basically what I just showed you guys. You know, so yeah, those are nice. You know, but like that's my my hobby. Like, I'll go and and have a, a drink with a friend or something. I'll take a photo, and then you know, and not not all the drinks are amazing, right? But um this is basically what what i do you know just just for yeah, fun and it is all, yeah. all lightroom mobile so i highly recommend that you guys uh do that and also let me see if i can find the reason I'm, I'm moving away is that i have a lot of like personal photos i don't like really like show the stuff that's on here um but you know um i have things like i'm trying to show, show see like this one i guess is a good example so you know, I just adjust the lighting and, that's you know, nice. rotate them a little bit and, and the, you know, the image pops more. So like, that's what I do for fun when I go out with friends, just take a picture of my drink and I'll edit it in Lightroom Mobile. So I highly recommend that you use Lightroom Mobile if you're cool. not doing that already. Cool. Nice. And then uh, the professor says, I take photos of drinks too. I don't drink. I just think they are beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, I I enjoy uh, a good cocktail. I'm not a fan of beer or anything, but a good cocktail or wine, I'm definitely yeah. a fan of. And you got so many nice ones up there. There's like Napa Valley, right? Oh yeah, I, I got I got hundreds. I mean, now now it's gonna sound like I'm alcoholic, but is, I've been doing this for years. So I yeah, have, wonderful uh, vineyards up in. in uh, I have hundreds. California. Oh yeah, we have wonderful vineyards, great cocktail bars, and all that stuff. So, and so uh, I, Steph, I highly Steph, recommend. I'm sorry. Stephanie says that uh, she does that with flowers, takes photos of oh, flowers. Cool. And, yeah. So. All right. So I'll show one more thing. It's already uh, we're already in the hour, and I do have another commitment that I have to get to. But yeah, I, I want to show you show you one last thing. So obviously, you know, a lot of people may may know that you can add a drop shadow, right? You can go into drop shadow, and there it is, and you know, you make it black, and that looks fantastic. But what if you wanted to create like a more realistic long shadow like what would you do well what i recommend that you do is that you select your subject in this case the word shadow but this could also be maybe within an actual composite depending on, on what you're working with but you can select the active pixels of a layer by holding control on windows command the mac and clicking 
And then I'll create a layer below that. I always like to name my layers so I can stay organized and fill with black. Alt and backspace because my foreign color is currently black. So Alt and backspace, that's option delete on the Mac, will fill with your background color. So now I have that layer there, right? And my background color was that, you know, almost black color, which I should have made it black just so it's easier to see. So let me do that again. Just so it's easier to see, I'm, I'm going to make it black, not, not because of anything else. And also, if you notice, now I made my background color black. So I used a different keyboard shortcut. <laughs> I pressed control backspace. Um, I noticed that it happened. So instinctively, I used a different keyboard shortcut, but you probably didn't notice that. Uh, Alt and backspace is for foreground color. Control backspace is for background color. Um, but anyway, and actually, you know what? I did it the long way because if I really wanted to, I could have done it the short way. So let me show you the, the super short way. Because what I did is I reloaded the selection and then applied a color. But what I could have really done is if I would have if I would have held um, the shift key. So if you hold shift and then you do um, the keyboard shortcuts I just mentioned, then you'll only will fill. Whoops, didn't that didn't work? Um, then you will only fill with the the color that uh, you will fill with the color, but on active pixels. So if I change this to blue, hold shift and then do shift. Alt and backspace, so that's shift, option, delete on the Mac, you'll fill only the active pixel. So I could have done that um, earlier, and but I did it the long way because I wasn't thinking. Sometimes when you're talking and explaining things, you forget to be efficient. Um, but that's another way of doing it. it. Now, if you don't like keyboard shortcuts, that's fine. You can you know go into edit and select fill, and then you, know, you can do foreground color, background color, pick the color that you want, up to you. And then preserve transparency is basically what I was just talking about by holding the shift key. But anyway, so now we have this background layer here called shadow. I would recommend converting that into a smart object. Then you can go into filter and select the blur gallery. And from blur, uh, blur gallery, you can select path blur. And with path blur, you're going to get this, this blue arrow. If you don't see it, like if, you, if, if it opens up like this, make sure you press control H for hide, control H, command H on the Mac. So once you see that arrow, you can move it to the direction you want your shadow to go. But the reason we can't see the shadow is because we need more speed. So let me add a little more speed, see that? Hmm. So now, you know, things are looking okay. The shadow's moving the way we want, but you know, it's also creating a shadow on the opposite side. So what you need to do is uncheck centered blur and look at what you get. Super cool, right? Look at this. Look how cool this is. So easy, right? Definitely. And then you can adjust, you know, the speed and any other adjustments that you want. And when you're done, you can just press on OK. And that's my shadow. Of course, you can change the blending mode, maybe change it to multiply or bring down the opacity, whatever you want to do. But this is your shadow layer. The reason we converted it into a smart object is that we can always double click on the blur gallery label. And we can change it to like the other side now if you wanted to impress. OK. And the shadow is now going on the opposite direction, whatever you want to do. Sandra says, cool. I say, very cool. <laughs> that would make a fun animation, too, where you do like oh, the for sure. steps of the, the shadow moving in. Awesome. Yeah, Awesome, Andrew. Well, yeah, thank you so much for, for having me. Um, uh, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure presenting for you and for Andrew. And please don't forget to follow Andrew on YouTube. What was your YouTube channel again, Andrew? All right. So uh, my YouTube is Digital Artist Andrew Kavanaugh. You can just do a search or youtube.com slash Digital Artist Andrew Kavanaugh. And shout out back to you. So uh, mm -hmm. youtube.com Photoshop training channel, PTC. Awesome. I think you have 1.65 million subscribers. So uh, you probably know better than me because I, I rarely them up check. To two but... million people, <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. So, so the one thing I, as I mentioned earlier, that I do want to plug is um, I really want you guys to check out uh, my latest video on blurring backgrounds in Photoshop. So, if you go to my YouTube channel, it's the latest video. Uh, if you're watching this in the future, it was published January 26, 2022. And um, yeah, it's been uh, so far my most popular video within 24 hours. So I highly recommend that you check it out. It's a new technique nice. on how to blur backgrounds in Photoshop 2022. Right. And to let people know, you also have a couple courses for sale. Yes. Photoshop compositing and yeah. mastering color, right? 
That's right, Andrew. So um, if you want a, a more advanced okay. course on compositing or color, make sure that you check it out. Um, the link is there. Um, and I'm sure, Andrew, you can probably pay, put the link like in the Paste description in. and all that once once the video goes live on YouTube. Correct. But yeah, um, if not, you can just type that in and, and make sure that you use the uh, capital letters in the P, T, and C in Photoshop Training Channel. I don't think it'll work without them. But the point okay. is that, Andrew, Andrew you might want to put the link in the description so that people could sure. easily find those. Absolutely. Yep. And then, uh, you know, just a, a little note for the uh, friends and followers on my Facebook groups. I have another group. So there's a new awesome. group, the facebook.com slash groups, creatives monetize. So mm. a group for people to ask questions about the ever new trend of NFTs, about monetizing your YouTube channel, your uh, what type of thumbnails you might be uh, focusing on, just other all the different questions and subjects that come up in terms of monetizing for creative. Mm -hmm. So That's creative right. monetize. We do have someone speaking about NFTs in February and we're going to be having other speakers and audio rooms as well. So, yeah. Awesome. Yep. And then just the last uh, comments, just wanted to let you know, Facebook user says, thank you. Both was great. Hannah says, thank you, Andrew and Jesus for a very pleasant evening. Wish you a nice weekend. Awesome. Thank you, Hannah. Steve says, thanks for this excellent presentation. Thank you, and Steve. Andrew says, thank you both. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Andrew. Yeah. So it was quite wonderful. So thank you so much. Thanks for being here. And uh, we'll have to think of other topics and themes to bring you back for more. So awesome. Sounds great. Yeah. And let's see. Uh, oh, yeah. The professor says this was awesome. <laughs> the professor. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna call you the professor next time I see That's you. That's right. That's right, Andrea. You you have a new name now. So. Yeah, the professor. I right, have a great one, everybody. Thanks so much for being here, and thank you so much, Jesus. It was really great. Thank you, Andrew, and thank you, everybody. See you soon.